Now let's go and get into vertical shifts. So the nice thing important that uh, um, we went over with horizontal shifts is you guys should remember when you're doing a horizontal, it's always kind of thinking of it that opposite, right? You know, when we were looking at the opposite, when you're shifting to the right or to the left, you're going to that opposite direction, right? So, but now when we're dealing with vertical, does anybody remember with vertical, what are we doing with our function now? <coughs> if we were just getting, before for horizontal, we were adding inside and outside the function. So when you have a vertical translation, we're going to be doing what? Does anybody remember? Yes? You yeah, you add or subtract k. And what's noticed about k for a quadratic is k is outside the function, right? h is inside the function. Here, c is inside the function, right? c is inside this function. But b is not. Yeah, it's outside. So therefore, if we're dealing with this, if I just want to say vertical shift up, then that just looks like this. It doesn't matter. Whatever a number, if I take a number and I add it to my function, not add it inside the function, but if I just add it to the function, then it's going to shift up. So f of x equals x squared plus k. Or f of x equals 5 um, plus 3 to the x. So therefore, you guys can see in this, if I just take my function and add it, just like I did with the quadratic, um, oh, what am I doing? B. So let's go and get an example here. So you guys should know f of x equals x squared plus 5. f of x equals 5 plus 3 to the x. Now, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, you can um, have the 5 after, which we'll talk about a little bit later. You don't always have to have it written in front. But we like to write in front. But just so you guys can understand, that's a positive 5. And that's positive 5 that's being added outside the function, right? Because our function is a to the x, right? Remember I wrote up there, a to the x? That's our function. Since we're adding the 5 outside the function, it's going to vertically shift it. Then if I'm going to be vertically shifting down, that will be f of x equals x minus c. So therefore, in a quadratic, you'd say f of x equals x squared minus k. For an exponential, it would be f of x equals negative b plus 3 to the x. So if you're subtracting a, um, if you're subtracting, ooh, that's a bad k. So let's just go and look at an example. If you did f of x equals x squared minus 1. So if you do f squared minus 1, then you're going to take your quadratic and you shift it down one unit. If I go over here and I say f of x equals negative 1 plus 3 to the x, or 3 to the x minus 1, it doesn't matter how I write it. If I go and write it like that, then I still you see, oh, you're subtracting 1 from your function. So therefore, you're going to take your exponential function and you're going to shift it down. OK? So those are your vertical shifts up and down. Um, we're not going to be doing too much with graphing. You guys do need to really understand.